Thank you so much. Nice to be here. Sounds like you're in a great mood. I'm trying. This is, uh, has not been a great day for me, folks. I, I lost my hair today. My fault. I had a bad habit of flipping my head back to keep the hair out of my eyes. One time too many. But it's nice to be here. I had dinner tonight with my uh, with my father. I made a classic Freudian slip. I meant to say, can you pass me the salt, please? But it comes out, you creep, you ruined my childhood. <laughs> totally destroyed the mood of his birthday party. 81 years old, my dad. That's That's got to be the tough one. You, you wake up one morning and you're above the recommended age for Scrabble. <laughs> Is, uh, but it's uh, it's been a rough year for the family. My my aunt passed away two weeks ago. And, uh, she was cremated, and we think that's what did it. And uh, <laughs> now I have to break the news to my uh, to my daughter, seven years old, the light of my life. Kid has an incredible imagination. We were playing house. She says to me, "Let's pretend you're the daddy, only you have a job." <laughs> She's an only child. The other day she asked me why she has no brothers and sisters. I didn't want to get into it, so I said, look, you have an older sister, but you're always missing her by about five minutes. She said, hey, that's like my other daddy. You're always just missing by about five minutes. <laughs> nice. Real nice. My wife would like to have another kid, but I'm not sure that it's right to bring another child into such a crazy world. You know what I'm talking about. Last night I'm tucking my daughter and she says to me, daddy, Daddy, how can 400 children be killed? Apparently she had seen a commercial on TV for a movie about the Jonestown Massacre. So I said, listen, honey, sometimes grown-ups join religious cults and they give their children lethal doses of Kool-Aid. <laughs> Good night, sweetie. <laughs> so, she's, she's doing okay. She's a light sleeper. Uh, good kid. Uh, uh, I'm an oddity in this business, folks. I am a happily married guy. It's true. Sorry, gals. And, uh, well, they seem to be dealing with it. That's great. And uh, I'll tell you my secret. My wife and I don't take each other for granted. That's the trick. Every morning for eight years, I ask her how she takes her coffee. It's a small thing, but it's annoying. No, I... I have a good marriage, but, but lately I think that my wife has been fooling around because our parent keeps saying, give it to me hard and fast before my husband John Katz comes home. <laughs> and yes, I'd love a cracker. <laughs> so. I don't know what it is about marriage. I, I don't care how powerful the initial attraction. At some point, the lust is replaced by this incredible longing for sleep. And... Uh, <laughs> We're going through this, my wife and I. We've, we've read all the sex manuals, tried both positions, and uh, <laughs> you see, she insists on turning out the lights before we make love, which does not bother me. It's, it's the hiding that seems so cruel. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what's strange. This is the truth. The longer I'm married, the more I'm losing my single instincts. I was at a party in Hollywood last month. Beautiful blonde starlet comes up to me. She says, my husband is away for the weekend. How about a lift home? I said, if you knew he was going to be away, you should have made travel arrangements. <laughs> this scares me. Uh, I got into a very, uh, a very strange mood before the show. I'm sitting at the bar. This uh, big guy sits down next to me. A construction worker. And we start talking about nuclear war. I say to him, look, you hear the sirens go off? The missiles are on their way. You've got 20 minutes to live. What are you going to do? He said, I am going to make it with anything that moves. He asked me what I was going to do. I said, I'm going to try and keep perfectly still. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you.